Welcome to Foundry Groups. As we dive in and get going in this group's content, just here remember what we really talked about in the teaching this past week. In Luke 9, Jesus is driving his disciples towards the point, the point of all things, the point of his ministry and the point of his life. And he's he's trying to get them to see it, and they're having a hard time understanding the point of things. Remember, Jesus keeps bringing up to them that he will be betrayed rejected and handed over to evil men and crucified and they're not hearing it they don't want to hear it and they fight against it and they're constantly fighting for who's going to be the greatest or who gets the most honor or things like that and they miss the point but once Jesus once the disciples you know later on in the gospels we'll talk about this when they when they understand what the death and resurrection of Christ actually accomplished, and they see from God's vantage point what was going on, and they're filled with the Holy Spirit, they become ambassadors to the gospel. They understand fully. And it tells us this, that if our focus in this life is all on temporary human things, we're going to miss the point of the gospel. It's not about our comfort. It's not about this life. It's about a living, costly obedience to God's calling in our lives. So as you look at this this week, please remember this, um, this calling out of Luke chapter 9 tells us we don't have to miss the point. The disciples kind of did it for us and are a living example of that, what we get to do is we get to give Christ lordship over our lives and live into this this Christian transformation, being filled with the Holy Spirit, living it out with the perspective God has on this world, not the perspective we have. We see small, God sees big. So we understand that um, we are called out by God called to go and be ambassadors for Christ. But here's the thing. Christ was often isolated and alone in his calling. And I want to say this as you wrestle in your groups. You're very blessed to be in groups that have human connection and relationship because Jesus often lived in a state of isolated knowledge. He knew what his calling was and no one else wanted to know and they rejected it. And he lived and held on to that kind of that tension alone. We get to realize and understand that we're called to be faithful and in costly obedience. And sometimes for you and I, that does mean that we live in costly obedience that will put us in states that are lonely. And people won't get why you don't watch what they watch, participate in what they participate in, or do what you do. People say, that doesn't seem like the smart thing to do with your life, your time, your money. And you can say, it doesn't matter if it sounds smart. I'm being obedient to God. And sometimes it makes you, it puts you in a place of loneliness. If you're in a place where it feels lonely, just know this. And this is one of my favorite parts that came out of the teaching is that God will be enough. God will be enough. And when we look at that and we realize what God did for Christ in sending Moses and Elijah to the Mount of Transfiguration, we realize that God sent two people to Jesus who understood and saw heaven's view of things. And they encouraged Jesus. And at the end of that conversation, in Luke 9, it says Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. He knew what he had to do, and he was encouraged in it. So encourage one another. Encourage one another with a bigger view on what God's called us to be and do as a church, you as individuals, and faithful witnesses to the glory of Christ and his kingdom presently. I like that. Hey there, Foundry Groups. Uh, I'm joined here by Tori Bazan, my little buddy, who is going to be reading the Foundry Groups kids question, the very first one. So, uh, all right, Tori, you ready? I'm ready. Take it away. Question number one. Jesus had a very difficult road ahead of him. He knew that soon the people he loved were going to reject him, betray him, make fun of him, and even kill him. Do you think he was scared or sad? Well done. I'm joined here this time by Lucy Berghorst, my other little buddy for the uh, kids group question reading. And uh, Lucy, favorite Disney character? Aurora. You know, a lot of people think I'm a sleeping beauty when I cash out, but I don't think so. I think it's kind of ugly. Anyways, um, go ahead. Read this question for him. Can you imagine what it was like for those disciples who joined Jesus on the mountain? (laughs) 
All right, I am joined here by my other little buddy, my daughter Bella. And um, Bella wanted me to ask who her favorite Disney character is, but we're not doing that because it's a boy. And I'm not okay with that. Let's just get that clear. No boys. All right, uh, Bella, why don't you go ahead and read? Read the following with me. While everyone was marveling at all, Jesus, uh, at all that Jesus did, he said to his disciples, Listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. But they did not understand what this meant. It was hidden from them so that they did not grasp it, and they were afraid to ask him about it. An argument started among the disciples as to which of them would be the greatest. Jesus, knowing their thoughts, took a little child and had him stand beside him. And he said to them, Whoever welcomes this little child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. For it is the one who is least among you all who is the greatest. Why do you think the disciples were arguing about who is the greatest? That's a great question. Good job, Bella. Thank you. No way. Fine. <laughs> I am joined by two more, my little buddies, but they're unemployed. They didn't get a question. So if you have any random jobs you need done around the house, you can call. That's why you say your name. Cadence. Or? Malaya. And will you be joyful in the jobs you're given? Yes. Yes. <laughs> she says with a sneer. So Cadence and Malaya, currently unemployed in the Foundry Group's question employment field. Have a great day, kids. All right, here we go with group's questions. Number one, have you ever felt lonely in a crowd? All right, question two. The disciples had some pretty famous moments where they completely missed the point. What about you? Have you ever uh, found yourself caught up in the trivial or the temporary things of this life and totally missed what God was doing? So this next question, question number three, um, is a deep question. But you could get away with the, the superficial answer. So the question is, what is the point of all this? This life, the church, your work, all that you're doing. What's the point? And, and don't give yourself the out of, well, it's God or it's Jesus. Dig into it a little. Really get into there and find out what's the point. Because in the point, I believe your calling will be echoing and if you dig around in there, that's, that's the depth of the question. Finding out what God has put meaning into. So spend some time. What is the point of all of this? Read the following passage from Luke 9, 44 to 48, and then answer this question. How could the disciples go from hearing about what would happen to Jesus, his betrayal, rejection, crucifixion, and death, then or death and um, resurrection, and then literally go straight into a fight about who among the disciples was the greatest? How could they do that? Question five, in John 2, 24, we, we know that um, even though the people clamored, you know, the crowds clamored and worked hard to get near Jesus and they cheered for him and loved him, it says that Jesus would not entrust himself to them for he knew all people. How can we learn anything from that? Um, so there's a question that's been asked us. How do we care for people and how can we get involved? That's a great question. And it's an important question for the church. So um, 
We do have a care team who serve the entire church, whether they're in groups or not. Um, Ideally, we want care to primarily be done in this church in and through our groups. The reason is you know each other well. You're going to care for each other because you're in close proximity. If the need gets greater and it needs to go to the greater, larger body of the foundry, awesome. We'll get involved. But ideally, the best thing we could do is have you as groups take care of one another. Take care because you know each other's stories. I love the times we find out that someone had surgery or someone's been sick. We don't love if someone's been sick, but someone's been sick or had a need and we never heard about it, but your group did and they met that need. And then we find out, you know, weeks, maybe even months later that during your time of need, you were really well cared for by the church, but it was in your group. So groups is a very personal way to do care, and we love that. But our care team and groups coordinator are in close to communication on this stuff to make sure that all the pastoral needs that come up are met. So we work really hard and intentionally to make sure that happens. So that's, that is part of it. But um, if you have an interest in being part of a care team, um, and, and serving in that, here's the best way to go. Sign up on your connection card that you have interest in being on a care team. And um, here's the thing I want to kind of preface this with, with. We don't just throw people who want to be in care into the care team. That's not how we work as a church. We have a specific process where we make sure that we put the people with the right spiritual gifts and the right attitude and heart for care into the care ministry. So if you want to find out more information on how, oh, the kids are having fun. That's awesome. No, it's good. Have fun. You're good. Don't worry about it. Don't feel bad. All right. Sorry. There's kids. It's snow week, right? So, I mean, you're going to get interrupted. I dig that. All right. So if you have um, more interest in, in getting involved in care, we would love to get you the information and go through that process and see if you have the giftedness for it. Because, um, you know, it it really does come down to you want the right people who are gifted to be caring doing that. And we make sure we do that responsibly and well here at the Foundry Church. If you're interested, by all means, reach out. We'd love to do the spiritual inventory, gifts inventory with you. And um, really, it, it happens a lot in 201 where we do that and profession of faith where we find out those giftedness uh, aspects and we get you involved in ministry. So if your heart's for it, come check it out with us and see if your gifts are also in alignment with that and we would get you uh, plugged into that ministry. Uh, yeah, that's that's answering the question, how do we care for people and how can we get involved here at the Foundry Church? Get involved in your groups, care for people there. And the second thing is, um, if you want more information, start with that connection card. Quick snippet on the end of this. I just want to make sure you don't have to be in groups to be cared for. We take care of all needs that come into this church, regardless of whether or not you're in a group. The best and most um, well-cared-for people are in groups because their group handles that. But if we have a need come in, we care for the body at large, no matter what um, we, we respond. We have a care team that does that and does excellent with it. I'm here to, I was going to introduce Heidi to you, uh, one of our staff members, but apparently because of the polar vortex, she had to leave. So I'd like to introduce you to Handy. Hello. I work for the church. (laughs) I think it is awesome. Shut up. That's great. It's Handy. Um, It's left Handy. So it's not, for me, it's not as good um, because, I mean, this dude, right-handed, this works. I can barely eat with you, you useless wretch. Um, hang on, Justin. I'm having a conversation with Handy. It's a staff member. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. Handy wants to be off the camera and have Kyle come up because he thinks Eric is right and this little sketch has gone poorly. Here we go. Hey, friends, uh, I'd like to take a minute and introduce to you uh, another little buddy. Doesn't fit anymore. You're the little buddy yeah. now. <laughs> nice, <I need laughs> little buddy. This is Kyle Nelson. I get to say a brief background. I've known Kyle since he was little bitty. I mean, seven was when I met you, and I remember you doing um, the. You were the lead in the um, 
Christmas play out of Riesland uh, once. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, you did good. I was the king on that. Yeah, yeah. and so uh, just I'm going to let Kyle tell you a bit about, well, yeah, you were the king, a little bit about what he does here at the church. But Kyle has been serving faithfully in this church for quite a while. He just graduated from Grand Valley this past December and works full-time at the church now, serving in um, the, the audio and visual um, stuff. So, uh, Kyle, why don't you take a minute, explain what you do, and give, well, it's kind of funny. You're explaining what you do on what you do. So tell them about it. Yeah. This is kind of weird for me because I'm usually the one behind the camera doing all this stuff. So, um, hey, I'm Kyle. Like Eric said, I just graduated from Grand Valley. I have a degree in film and video production. And I am the guy who's kind of behind the camera all the time making these videos. So I make the video teachings. I make the small group videos. I make a lot of the... Basically, just about any videos. Yeah, just about any video you've seen yeah. in like the past year, I've so done. So basically, you could say you're kind of a big deal. <laughs> yeah, that was good, wasn't it? Yeah, I think you're a big deal. I didn't mean it as a joke. Why did you laugh, Justin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you're a big deal. Kyle has, Thanks, I think, Eric. no, I'm serious. Kyle has taken our video game up, our video game, our video production level way up, and it's been so fun watching you work and grow in this. Um, so whenever you see Profession of Faith videos, announcement videos with weird, corny, like, anime music or heart music, this is the dude putting it together. Kyle does a lot of work for us over in the back cave. Um, so I just want, if you ever see him behind the sound booth, or you track him down, say hi, meet Kyle. He's a great guy, young man. You're 23 now? 22. 22. So, yeah, you, Kyle, 22-year-old. Oh, yeah, Kyle's single. Oh, if you like it, then you should have put a ring on it. If you like it, then you should. Whoa, oh, 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 oh. You want to, we, no? No <laughs> The response. last thing you want to see me do is dance. Really? Mm-hmm. Maybe the last thing we want to see. No, we want to see you. We want to see you have your first dance with your bride. Justin will buy I will be over there. Just, oh, there he is, our baby. He's all grown up. So, all right, Kyle Nelson, future husband but current single. Maybe you're going to fix that. I don't know. This just took a super awkward turn. You're not allowed to edit it out. I have to fix all this, too. Stop it. <laughs> 